Welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of The Open Educator, the best place to be on a Tuesday morning. Thank you for joining us and for taking the first step role playing professionally today, creating structure to your day. To grow. And I would like to everyone, I would like to encourage everyone, if you have a camera and you're able to, please turn it on. It's a form of leadership. We're getting comfortable in front of the camera and we're growing and building this community. And if some are on the camera and some are off the camera, uh, it, it creates a division. And we're here to build bridges, not make divisions. So if you can, please turn the camera on and of course, listen intently. And as a reminder, this community was created to play, create a break from our isolation, to create a unity among people with similar minds, similar wants, similar desires, uh, who are also motivated and to learn from each other and to have this social outlet, which we often crave for, that is a mental break, but at the same time building this reservoir, this this well of of knowledge, this well of energy, and this well of, of creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship. So much like a garden, right? You, if you plant, if anyone is interested in gardening or planting, you have to till the soil, you have to water the plant. And that's what I mean by professionalizing your experience in school or professionalizing the student experience, right? So we're constantly catering to that soil, to those plants, and we are watering those seeds to make sure that they grow. And as we attend sessions like this, as we engage with the work, as we ask questions and reflect and we use our critical thinking skills, our creative minds, we start watering those seeds because they will sprout later on. So that's that's what Grant created this uh, community, the Open Educator community, and for at least this one hour a day, we have a resource that support. So just like this community, it's different than other communities that we have. And to remind everyone, the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program is very different. Of course, we help innovators and students and others create businesses. And you can walk down Central, you can walk down Tampa, you, you can meet them. There's many actually here on our call in our classes, and you see that with the amazing work and the videos that they're doing. Of course, we create innovators, those who work with products, create new products, services, and ideas. If you guys know, for instance, you know, we can we can look at Uber, right? That's a whole new product, a whole new company, a whole new business model, and now they're purchasing another company, and someone had, per, they're purchasing Drizzly, the this uh, on-demand delivery of beverages. So we can start seeing even innovation plays there. Well, they need people like us who have this creative mind, problem solving skills, innovative thinking outside the box, et cetera. But lastly, we empower students to create and define careers that they choose from. And would you believe that I have a student who created, starting in my class, a following on YouTube, created a product line, makeup line, and sold her company for $2 billion to L'Oreal? Yes, you wanna know what? She's not the only one but that was in my class with YouTube. And I have a f wonderful few other stories as well. So we're creating people who create their own careers, their own journey that's defined by themselves, not by others. So our next guest who's someone do just that, uh, to have her back and to share her wisdom. And she definitely makes positive change in the world. She's always impressed me with her work ethic, her ability to create and see opportunities, which is exactly what entrepreneurs do, what innovators do, and what people who want to get ahead and, and, and create the life that they want to. Uh, so please give me a warm welcome to Miranda Douglas. She's the executive director of the FYI Community Partnership and founder of Top Knots, a, a yacht chartering concierge business. So please give a warm welcome. And we do this through sign language, which is, which is a, applause. So Miranda, <laughs> welcome. And thank you. So please, uh, you know, thanks for being on this cast. And where does this cast find you? And maybe you can bring us up to speed on what you've been working on, because I know it's been a lot since we last talked. Yes. Um, so, yeah, again, I am the executive director of FYI Community Partnerships. And um, FYI is actually a community resource network. And we are currently supporting the Lake Bellevue community, which is an underserved community right outside of Clearwater Beach, downtown Clearwater, um, you know, local Clearwater. 
Um, so I've been working out there and I've been doing some mural installations as a community engagement and beautification project. Um, so far we have completed 14 storm drain murals, a painted intersection, and then we have a wall mural coming up. Not this weekend because it's Super Bowl weekend, but maybe next weekend um, we will get out there and get it done. Um, and so, yeah, I've been I've, I've been working with FYI for the past two years almost. Um, it was stemmed from an internship from USF. I was there as an understudy, a, a local volunteer, um, and then I was able to move into my position just from getting a better understanding of what the community needed, helping them um, digest the information that they got from their community needs assessment. So there were a lot of metrics in there, a lot of information in there that they weren't uh, ready to process. And so I was able to uh, kind of move into my position from there and we were able to pump out the murals on MLK program. And um, we've been doing murals ever since. <laughs> So I know you have an interesting story, which is very relevant to the students, but why don't you share a little bit how you ended up as the executive director or how you found your path to, to that role? Um, community service is instilled in me. I was brought up in the YMCA, and so it's just part of my nature. Um, and then when I was looking for an internship, I was at USF St. Pete, and so I was able to be exposed to the mural artistry out there, the entire transition of the downtown artwork. And so I wanted to be able to bring that kind of energy to Clearwater where I was and bring those kind of projects and opportunities to the artists that were there as well. So what I hear you saying is you were required or expected to have some sort of internship while you're a student at the university. And I think there are many students who do fall or have fallen in that category, but you've chosen to leverage that as as a in, you, or to get experience and, to, and then to enroll in this uh, executive director position. I, so this is a wonderful example of how what some of you, if you want to professionalize the story or the experiences you're having before you graduate, could lead to leadership positions. It's not easy to be or to, to ever get an executive director position. But just imagine doing that right after you finish uni. And now that says a big, let's say a big statement on your CV or your resume as you go forward, because that directly points to not, not just saying, I have wonderful projects in Dr. D's class uh, and, and learning leadership and group work and whatever, but that translated to a position in the community leading others and with a unique dynamic because a lot of the people that I assume Miranda you're working with they don't directly report to you and no. therefore it takes a very different type of person or different types of skills to harness the agency of others to get them to align with the greater vision so right. maybe you can share how the organization structured and talk about the dynamics because it's very different than just saying this person's working for me, I'm paying them, and then all these other volunteers or board members. Um, and so, yeah, I guess it's kind of, I have to say when I came on board, the organization was kind of like a social services nonprofit program. They help people sign up for uh, food stamps and Medicaid, and they did it as a, as a team. There was five of them. Um, and that was the most of their services. And so when I came on board and we started talking about the murals on MLK program, not only was it we were having to, emails were like out the window. I couldn't email them anymore. They, we, we just weren't getting anything done because my board members are older. Um, they were in their late 60s, moving into their 70s, uh, well-established in their careers, about to retire. They've been doing this for, you know, 10 years voluntarily. And so communicating through email wasn't really um, getting through to them to get things done. Um, also, when we were mind mapping and really trying to uh, figure out how we were going to work together, uh, it really came to, we had to do house calls and we had to do sitting down opportunities and discovery conversations, talking to each other, figuring out what our pain points were, 
what our strengths were, what we were wanting to bring to the table. And I found that a lot of that may be the treasurer, um, you know, just because he ran the concession stand at a, a little league game became the treasurer, but that's not his strength. He was just deemed the treasurer because, you know, he just raised his hand for it. But, you know, that's not efficient. That's not effective. And so having a discovery conversation with him and figuring out what he was really interested in and redirecting that energy in a more um, appropriate manner was a part of the discovery process. I don't know if I was answering the question. <laughs> I, you did great because what you hit on is about five different tools that in the various classes that my students are learning. So for instance, the biggest challenge that you mentioned that you were facing was there is this generation gap and technology gap between you and who you're meant to be working with. Right. And of course that can create major barriers, barriers to advancement, barriers to have a common vision, a common goal, a group work, teamwork, or whatever. And many of you guys have some of the, probably the same challenges if, and if you haven't, you will be faced. So what did Miranda do? She had, she met with them, one, maybe had what she called a discovery session. Discovery session is very much like the empathy building tool that you learn in the design thinking student consulting uh, module, right? Or even in the innovation course, so the strategy course, creativity, when we talk about a needs assessment or understanding the end user, well, you also have to understand the people that you're working with to align what their strengths are, maybe what the your strengths are, or what the goals are to, to be able to align this for high uh, performing teams, for better group work, uh, she also mentioned mind mapping. So they have very different language. language uh, uh, some feedback. Perfect. And and that is that just that me? Just me? Okay, can you hear me? Test. Perfect. So uh, we talked about mind mapping. Mind mapping is another tool that I believe you use in the creativity and innovation class. What is this? This is the di divergent thinking, but it's also a visualization tool uh, to help and remove some of, uh, you know, when you vision something, then people can come around a common uh, vision and reduce the complexity. You know, instead of us just going in our heads and saying this is our thoughts or whatever, but when you visualize it and you work as a team to create this mind map or brainstorming tool and visioning board, now people can get behind it, which is exactly part of uh, all three courses. So absolutely. And so she was trying, uh, Miranda was trying to get over that hump of technology differences, age differences, probably cognitive differences, by meeting them on the humanistic level, using visualization, using brainstorming, and building a common common theme within the group. So absolutely, excellent. Um, many of you are going to have to face some of these challenges because you might be working with, you might have older people reporting to you. You might have suppliers that are older people. So you're going to have to manage these generational gaps uh, regardless if you're an entrepreneur or manager or leader or whatever. So. Miranda, thank you for highlighting that. Uh, I think that these are really great, great examples because they report directly back to what the students are working on and we can see how they're relevant. So that sounds like, how, how are things going since this, this process and this realignment uh, with, with the executive board? Uh, we're getting things done a lot faster. Um, I think to be able to pump out almost 16 murals is incredible and in, um, in less than two years is incredible. Um, and that's just really leveraging our resources, um, having those conversations with people that we need to get the resources from. Um, and yeah, just being really efficient about how we go about things. And so it was very necessary because, you know, just to think before I came on board, the organization was solely signing people up for food stamps, you know, like Medicaid or whatever. And that was it. That was their capacity. They wanted to do more, but everybody's doing the same thing and they're not communicating about their strengths. And so I think it was just, you know, 
a matter of luck for them as well that I came in and I was like, well, let's talk this way. Let's try to have a conversation this way. And we were able to move forward from there. What I also want to highlight this. So yes, Miranda is talking about working as the executive director as a non for profit, but let's be realistic. A non for profit does, doesn't necessarily have deep pockets. So she's very much being an entrepreneur and trying to bootstrap whatever resources that she can harness to execute the vision, goals, raise funds, whatever, the planning. So just because it's a non-for-profit and it's been around for years doesn't mean the skills of an entrepreneur are not directly relevant. So let's talk about this uh, other project and venture that you're working on. And I know you're, this is, a, I don't know where it falls into the bigger vision, but tell me about the, the, um, the venture that you're working on in terms of your yacht concierge business. Maybe why don't you share a bit about what that is? Yes. Um, so through USF, um, so I just want to take a little pause. Use the USF network as much as you can. Use the resources that they have as much as you can, um, because I feel like I was exposed to so many different things. And one of those things is I was a marketing coordinator for a yacht charter um, in St. Pete, and I was there for a while. And that's where I really got a, my first taste of the yacht industry and the marine industry. Um, and then I moved on, you know, things kind of, you know, just I just moved on to a different organization. And I just kept thinking about how much I loved being on the water, how much I loved that experience, um, and how many people I met doing that. And so I started Top Knots which was just a uh, yacht charter concierge. I'd help people get on the water if you're looking for a yacht for the day or for a special event, um, working with private boat owners to rent out their boats for the day. Um, and as I've been doing that and getting to know more about the industry, I have fallen in love with, you know, just the different parts. And I've been making um, an effort to build a more marine network to support the boat owners with their vessels, whether it be through um, insurance, you know, repairs, whatever, um, the charter service. And so that is what Top Knots is. And that has been a labor of love, but definitely a passion that I really am excited about pursuing. Um, and I've been working on that for about three years now. I'm curious to know how, so this, what I want to highlight to those here listening is, so she was working in a yacht chartering industry and, and company. And she took that experience, identified an opportunity and need that's there in the market, and then created her business, which is exactly the, the process, right? So how did you, I, when did it come to your attention that there was a need out there for people to have a concierge service uh, opposed to what was already existing in the market? Or what? how did you do the research or how did you come up with that opportunity or identify that gap? Um, I just as um, I was with the organization and and, you know, just building my personal network, people didn't know that you could rent out a yacht for the day. It was just like a foreign idea. And you can rent a car, you can, you know, get on the ferry or, you know, do one of the dolphin cruises. But to have an exclusive private experience aboard a yacht um, was just, you know, not heard of. So I just capitalized on that, on connecting people. I was like, I knew these people when I worked with them. Um, my, I do a lot of different things. I'm a bartender. I'm a blackjack dealer. So my network is huge. And I would just tell those people like, hey, if you ever want to get on the water for the day, let me know. And so that was how I was able to build just the charter concierge network and um, really just really capitalize on the things I was exposed to. And I feel like I don't know a lot of other women um, or a lot of African-American women in the industry. And so that has been an adventure trying to reach out and find resources and also be a resource for other women or people of color coming up in the industry. So there's several things that Miranda shared that I, I think are really relevant to the classes. Uh, Miranda mentioned, oh, we can rent a, a car for a day. We can rent a house for a day. We can rent some other thing. But people didn't make the connection between renting those things, which are different, but applying that renting philosophy or perspective to a boat. And that is directly tied to the exercises in the creativity and innovation class, right? Taking something and applying it to something else. 
And now what has happened? She's created her own business and identifying the opportunity and taking one set of knowledge or assumptions or beliefs or mindset and applying it to something else. Perfect example. Thank you, Miranda. And then she talked about networking. So even if she is working as a black Jack dealer, which sounds really interesting. I'm sure you meet tons of people, but she's also building her network, right? You have to be able to pitch. You have to be able to sell. You have to 30 seconds. I mean, I, I assume, you know, the dealership goes fast and you have to get your pitch in and value prop in right away. So maybe she's doing that over and over and over and over to get her pitch down. Is that anything different than what we have to do in our other classes? where you're expected to make four or five presentations, you're making your videos in the creativity class, that's exactly what you're being prepared to do. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful, thank you for sharing that. I think these are wonderful examples of how and what we're learning in, pre in, in classroom and in theory apply directly to what you're doing and in practice. So it is relevant, you just have to be able to step back and observe and see how they, the two fit together. Yes. So you you briefly mentioned uh, some of the challenges, but maybe you could share a bit about what are the biggest challenges you face in either of those ventures and how you've overcome them or maybe, you know, where or you're where you're trying to seek out uh, to overcome them. Um, you know, Communication is a, is a constant challenge, I would have to say. Um, you're just consistently and constantly coming into different people with different perceptions or, you know, beliefs and trying to get them to believe what you believe is, you know, is a challenge. So um, I think that's just going to be a fluent exercise. And what I've done is just slow down um, and really try to put myself in those different perspectives to see where they're coming from, to see if I can try to solve that emotional uh, gap or whatever it may be. Um, and, you know, those discovery conversations, making friends just for the sake of making friends is going to get you a lot further than, um, you know, going to these like random networking things. I've done it before. I've met a few key people that, you know, I'm still in touch with. Um, but for example, with the mural projects that I'm working on, the artist that I'm working with, I met him at a bar through another friend. I went to the bar with another friend and I met him and I was just so amazed by the ability that we were given coloring sheets to color in. This man was making his own coloring sheets and then going back and coloring them. So I was just like, I got to be your friend. And so, you know, a couple of years later, he's the lead artist for this painted intersection project that we're doing. We know that we we work well together, um, you know, that I'm going to be responsible with these kind of projects. I'm going to make sure we get done, have all the details settled. Um, and so, you know, you know, just making friends for the sake of making friends is going to get you a lot further. It's going to expand your network a lot more to a lot more valuable uh, clients or people that you need to be in touch with. And, um, you know, just learning how to communicate. Like uh, Professor D said, when I'm doing my deal jobs or when I'm doing whatever, you have literally five seconds, not 30 seconds to say what you're going to say, if it's going to matter to that person and, you know, hopefully make your pitch. And you know, I had to get really good at it. I had to be really confident about it. And I had to know what to do after that, what to do when they said yes, because that's going to be the next big thing. You're expecting people to say no, but what are you going to do when they say yes? Um, and so that's something that you definitely uh, got to be keeping in mind too. <laughs> One thing that stands out with Miranda is so we can say networking, but it's not networking, just giving business cards and saying hi. And, you know, Miranda frames in terms of making friends, but it's this relationship building. Those deeper ties, the people that you keep in touch with, that even if you just say, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while, just, you know, thinking of you and, and, and building this level of trust at some level. That's how, you know, Miranda mentioned. Now they have this artist that they met in the past being a lead on an, another bigger project. And now you have trust and now you know about the person, you know a bit more about what they can do. And it, it, it makes executing projects a lot easier because uh, you're maintaining these relationships or friendships. Right. So I would like to prime 
uh, the students to think. I'm going to ask Miranda a couple couple more questions, but I would like to then open the floor to the students with questions that she you may have uh, for Miranda. So I know we talk about learning, and I'm wondering what you do to continuously learn, and and if so, what what skills have you been trying to hone in or learn uh, recently that that has helped you? Um. So with um top knots or just you know with me growing as a person my uncle gave me his boat so i'm an official boat owner and i have been taking it apart getting to learn everything about it the ins and outs where to go where people go to buy stuff the terms everything i've just immersed myself into that so that i can be learning um also um i wanted to show you guys this book that i just got Um, cause I don't read a lot of books. Like I'm, I'm sorry. I was glad to graduate and not have to read any more textbooks. Um, and so my, I do have some other like novels that I'm reading that are, you know, good just for breaking up my imagination and helping you get around some like, you know, realistic thoughts. But anyways, I got this book. It is called Brain Bend, right? And it's these 3D mazes it doesn't tell you where to start it doesn't tell you the way out it's a book of about 13 crazy 3d mazes and i just feel like it helps me use different parts of my brain exercise different parts of my brain use different problem solving skills or whatever so um i started one and i got frustrated but i'm addicted to it so i'm gonna keep trying to do it um and i think that's I guess that's just, you know, what I've been doing to challenge myself to keep learning is to keep putting myself in situations that aren't traditional for me, that are challenging for me. Um, and those are the those are the things, boats and brain bending books. <laughs> Interesting. The reason is. One, trying to learn the technical aspect uh, of the boat, right? So this is last week we talked to Chris Packett. What did he do? He was learning. Of course, he knew that. Entrepreneurial. He was learning, took the courses, but he was learning an intersection of the technical aspect. That's exactly what Miranda is doing, not necessarily in technology, but the boat marine technology and, and other things. But also what's interesting, there's a reason why I have you do the creativity assessment in the, in the class, if you guys remember, right? Why, when are you most creative or exercises to help you continuously think creatively, challenge certain assumptions? That's exactly what Miranda is doing with her maze boxes. So we can start seeing why if we continue to practice this to like a muscle, we have to we'll get better. But if we put it away in a drawer and we don't touch it, it atrophies, just like if we don't go to the gym, if we don't run, if we don't exercise. So wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Miranda. I'd like to open the floor before I I ask Miranda any last questions. But do you have what questions do you have for Miranda? I mean, this has been fabulous. I really Really grateful and appreciate that you you being here, Miranda. Thank you, Adam. Sienna, maybe you can. I don't know if people are texting anything. I, I don't have any. I don't have the. Yeah, it's a question. Graham has a question. Graham. Oh, uh, so the question I have is: so you said after like those five seconds that you make that uh, really good first impression, and you do like secure that deal, so to speak. Um, what do you what do you recommend as being like the next step to uh, secure that that deal? Um, ask them why or what they're doing so that you you put the ball back into their court and make them come out attracted to you. Um, so so my thing is, hey, if you ever want to get on the water, let me know. I can get you on the yacht charter and they're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. OK, yeah. So when when's the next time you guys are thinking about what's the next event coming up or, you know, you know, I'm working in corporate events, so I'm like, oh, what is this company? Tell me more about what you're responsible for or something like that to put the ball back in their court to make them like, I need to have this experience. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Thank you. This is considered the needs assessment and you are building empathy so she can provide a service or a product that meets their needs. At the same time, she's learning more about them, maybe there's a referral that potentially someone in the, their business or a friend or this is exactly what we're learning in our in our class. 
Yeah. So thank you for, for sharing that. And, and you might, you know, you might say, oh, is it sales? Well, um, I, there may be some similarities to the sales process that you might get taught in the sales training class. There's a big difference between a needs assessment and discovery and empathy than constantly trying to to close a deal right away. And there's a big difference. Yeah. And you build value from that as well um, because you're going to learn that your friends are not your clients, they're not your network, your target market. Um, and so you kind of weed out those people. Um, I'm after high value clients. And so I know if you're going to be serious about this, um, you're going to already meet this budget. And so, you know, or whatever you're doing, you're already going to meet this, you know, box of needs that I have, determinants that I have. And you kind of like weed out the unnecessary, you know, riffraff. And so you just are dealing with your yeses, you're dealing with your next steps, you're just dealing with how to build on those relationships with the people that you actually want to work with. Great. And uh, other questions, Sandra? Yeah, Cassidy has a question. Cassidy. Hi, Miranda. Hey, um, Cassidy. I was just wondering, were you intimidated going into an industry that you saw endless potential in, but you, that you knew nothing about? Um, I was. Yes, I was. Um, but at the same time, it was. I was so like. I don't know, like mysticized by it. Like I was just like, oh my God, like look at all these different size boats. Look at all the places you can go. Like I was just taken over by it. So it just didn't matter as much that there were gonna be so many obstacles ahead or different, you know, places of intimidation. Yeah, I did have to deal with it. I still do. I'm still, I'm an introvert. Um, and so like, I hate making calls. I hate like doing it, but I'm so like, I gotta get your boat. I got to get your boat because other people are going to want to get on it and we got to have this experience. And so I'm just so taken over by the passion of it that, um, you know, it doesn't matter. And I think that also speaks to doing things that really are in line with who you are um, and what you see yourself doing um, down the line. I'm curious to know, Miranda, have, have you created like a slide deck, pitch deck or marketing material? And if so, like how has that helped you uh, formulate your idea, your value prop, and help others understand all the offerings that you make. Um, yes, yeah, so I have, and it's a it's a living document. I update it all the time, but I do have a slide deck for top knots, um, and you can get through it in about two minutes, less than two minutes, because I know I don't have your attention long. It has um, maybe five pages. It's those points. Um, I don't really, I don't know what the question is, but Canva is awesome for that. Um, I've been using that to just make something. I can download it as a PDF. I can change a few keywords if I'm talking to a boat owner or an already established charter operation. Um, and it just helps you communicate more effectively um, with those things. So much of the students work, they're expected to create prototypes, create mock-ups, practice their presentation, master their slide deck, be able to tell a story and narrative, be able to demonstrate and communicate data as part of their narrative. So you can start seeing how what you are doing in the class is directly relevant to, you know, what Miranda is doing and, and, and her goals and, and probably many of you, because I know you guys have shared that you have, uh, are, some of you already have your own side hustle and businesses, and some of you have your other, uh, other ambitions. So thank you. Any other questions before I maybe? Yes. Yeah, Ethan has a question. Ethan, shoot. Yeah. Hi, Miranda. So you mentioned how you do a bunch of different things with your time, you know, blackjack dealer, bartender, community service, and also with the uh, um, business that you have. So I'm just wondering, how do you find time for everything? Because it seems like you're a very busy woman. Uh, I am, and I just capitalize on time management. I also have a three-year-old, and I, I think that's really what helped me um, get my stuff together because I really have to use the time that I have um, and maximize on it. And so I have um, certain days for certain projects. So that way I'm not like, I only got two hours for this. I only got two hours for this. Um, I have a day for that to get a list of things done. Um, a couple of days ago, I watched with my friend, uh, there was like this food 
do documentary about Rome and about how the people just live their lives there. And um, the guy was just like, yeah, you know, today I'm supposed to give this guy a call. And, you know, if he calls me back, OK, if not, oh, well, you know, but tomorrow I got to move on. But today this is my thing for today. And so I, I think that helps me control the experiences, control, you know, what I'm focused on and then, you know, capitalize on my time management. To, I'm not jumping around on different things. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think this is very important because one, not only is Miranda busy, but we also have juggling many projects, school, work, family, relationships, maybe kids, other things, right? This situation that we're in also, I mean, all of these take, take time away. So time management, but she also mentioned that she has a weekly plan or even a monthly plan and she sets time aside. And for those in the scalability class in the student consulting design thinking class, you guys are expected to make a project plan or a personal charter and you are to time and project plan the whole semester. You can start seeing what Miranda is doing is directly relevant to the skills you're trying to learn in the class. And that's why I have you do that. Uh, it helps you learn better, learn more. It helps you complete the project better, but it's important for time management, project management, business management, period. So sure. this is why I have you do it. It's not needless work. It's because if you don't learn it now, you're going to have to learn it later. Yeah, for sure. I had to learn a lot of stuff on the run. Um, and um, one thing that I that I say when I'm frustrated is it's hard to learn and execute at the same time. So just go ahead and take that little bit of time to learn it right now. Get your kinks out, figure out what it is. And then when it's time to execute, you can copy and paste because you've already learned it. <laughs> Any last questions before I have a, a question? OK, so thank you so much, Miranda. But I want to ask, reflecting back, because I know that you also, did you mention that you also journal? Yeah, oh, a little what, bit. What, what, what role does the journaling play, or how often do you? Uh, I, I try to journal multiple times a day. Um, I am always thinking. I'm always, I have a lot going on. And so I have to capture my ideas or I just feel guilty about, you know, I just feel guilty about either losing it or not being able to move on from it. And so that helps me, like I said, just capture those ideas, give myself permission to come back. Or when I'm looking back through a book, you know, to see how I felt about it, you know, I have my notes there that said, you know, this is what I was thinking about. Have I grown from that point? Do I still have that same perspective? Um, and so that's, that's kind of how I use journaling. Great, great. So the students in the creativity and innovation class, they're expected to buy the Project B journal and to fill it out. And this helps you reflect on many aspects of life, some of it about creativity, some about your present state, which impacts your creativity, some about your future state and even past state. So I emphasize journaling there. And even in the other classes, you're expected to create reflection videos or confessional videos which is very similar, except for it's just the video mode, but wonderful. My last question to you would be, knowing where you're at now, if you could go, go back and give yourself some advice to your, what would you say to her? You were right. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I've always been really driven. I always knew I wanted to be a successful businesswoman and that I was going to have to put in work to get to that point. Um, and, you know, I guess never lose sight of yourself and, you know, keep developing your personality. That would be probably about it. Um, but I'm, I'm very proud of how far I've come. Even an opportunity like this um, is amazing. So just being steadfast, um, staying focused and believing in yourself is what I would tell myself I mean, that you were right because I I made it, man. <laughs> when you say develop your personality, what do you mean by that? And how can we, if we were wanted to do that, how how would we go about doing that? Or what what do you recommend? Or your thoughts? 
Um, well, like I mentioned, I'm an introvert, so you know, by default, I will stay home and do whatever it is that makes me comfortable. Um, but getting out there and to have different experiences is what's going to help you round out your personality and have more things to talk about or to strike up conversation about or even to just make you know a presence with people and so like when i go to the boat shows they're, they're not my people are not really there but for whatever reason my personality attracts you know people want me to come aboard or they want to tell me something cool about the boat as they're getting off and you know you just kind of like go back and forth with them like just be out there, just get out there, write out your personality, try out different things and really make friends for the sake of making friends. Don't be thinking about how you can monetize off of them, but you know, or make it in a networking relationship. Just really make friends for the sake of making friends and your network will grow exponentially. Like the people that I've met through USF have been amazing and I've met so many more people through them, still my close friends. I've met a lot of valuable people through them as well and just getting out and doing things that, you know, I just wouldn't do normally on my own. I've met people as well. And so just uh, getting out there. I don't know. <laughs> Excellent. You know, the idea that making friends, that's why we've created this community, why you can build that, why you can see them and people are there, even if it's just these little squares, we're here going through the same things and we hear others that have gone before. So, Miranda, I can't thank you enough for spending uh, the morning with us. Thank you for sharing your experience, wisdom, uh, advice, and hope to have you back and to catch up soon. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, now I'd like to maybe pivot to the Q&A. Uh, you're welcome to, to, to stay, Miranda. If not, uh, we'll probably just be talking about homework, and what, uh, but you're welcome to stay if you want. If not, I'll, I'll follow up soon. Uh, I'll give you about 10 more minutes. Cool. I miss being at USF. I'm, I'm just going to pretend like I'm a student. <laughs> cool, cool. So uh, this is the time where I usually have kind of office hours or questions. I know a lot of students, are, I have students in three different classes here. And um, what questions do you have about the homework, where you guys are going? You know, sometimes it's some of you are more prepared than others. Some of you are less prepared than others. So I'm here to answer any questions you might be having um, or, or people have been misleading you. But uh, what questions do you have for any of your classes or the homework? Yeah, Austin has a question. Austin. Um, <clears throat> so I was wondering for the, uh, the PowerPoint, the evaluating your creativity booklet, mm -hmm. um, for the slide about deferring judgment, I'm not really could you explain that a little bit more like what sure. are we, like what can are some you, examples i don't have it pulled up but read it to me yeah so it says do you defer judgment we would like you to take the test uh spend the next 24 hours okay i know exactly are you ready points of view okay perfect. keep your so eyes maybe, open for an idea perfect. Right. Per perfect i got it so think of it this way if we're deferring judgment what do we have to do we have to be aware that we're making judgments. So mm -hmm. all I'm asking you to do for the next 24 hours, maybe you know, take a little notebook or whatever, and just be mindful, be aware, because you may be saying consciously or unconsciously, oh, this is good, this is bad, I like this, this is blah, 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 blah. And there are judgments there. And all I want you to do is somehow reflect and monitor, you know, monitor them, document them, and then write a, a summary of that experience, because what you're trying to do is slow down that thought process. Miranda mentioned that. Slow down that thought process so you are aware that you might be making judgments. Well, that you might be making judgments that you're not even aware. Of. So what do I expect? What do you expect? Just be aware and write a summary based off of that 24 hour uh, notice. Got you. Okay, sweet. Well, that, that clears it up. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? Uh, Ethan? Ethan. Yeah, so for the Project Be Your video, um, I was just practicing, you know, timing myself with my response that I already typed out, 
and I know on the instructions it said it was pretty strict about following the rules for the video of being in five to six minutes. When I've been trying it out so far, it's been closer to seven. Should I trim back my response or is that all right? Uh, to be fair, I'm fine with seven minutes. I just don't want them under five. The reason is, you know how students are. They go four and a half, then they go four, then they go three, then they go two, and then they go one. So I want to make the effort that, you know, I have these targets more because I think that's a minimum quality, minimum time for quality. But when you can see how this can rapidly turn into a, a shit show when students are turning a one minute, two minute thing and trying mm. and students put five to six minutes in good. Quality. So, yes, if you put good quality in and it's seven minutes, I'm happy for you. And that's what I want you to do. Quality over quality, quality, but you need to have a minimum time period. OK, thank you. Was anyone impressed with the great work that students have been posting? There's been some really interesting stories, no? Did you realize how many people have their own businesses already? Their own side hustles? Some of them have multiple businesses. Pretty interesting story. Or custom shoes, music, woodworking, everything. Um, so like I said from day one when we met, you guys are talented. You just don't know how talented you guys are. And that's why we're building this network. Because you know what? If you want a custom pair of shoes, you know where to go. If you want music being made or artwork, you know where to go. And there, or the one guy's got a, a pizza place already. He owns a franchise pizza place. So this is the talent. That you just might not be aware of it. No one's ever told you you guys are talented. And now you know and you see that. That's why we've created this, this community. Or dog accessory business. Luxury dog accessory business. Back some bros, y'all. Okay. Um, what else? What other questions might you have? So I can't highlight enough. You can go through school like a zombie and not learn anything. That's not what we're training you to do. I want you to be proud of the work and every assignment you turn in. Because ultimately, you're going to get more out of it. It's not what I want you to do. It's what I want you to do, go above and beyond and make yourself proud. Because when you do that, you're going to learn more. You're going to have better work. You're going to put more time in. You're going to make more connections. And you're planting and watering those seeds, those professional seeds. So that's my goal. Uh, and so it's not so much what I want. Of course, I have to have parameters because otherwise students take it to an extreme and then we lose all resemblance to what education is supposed to be. So how about this? Any assignment you do, and a lot of them I do is like the shared thread where everybody can see your work. You can be that student that wows every other single student in the classroom. That should be your goal. Or at least to improve the work that you've been doing. You see the talent. And I know you guys are just as talented. Now we got to keep every video, every assignment, get bigger and better. That's the difference between how LeBron got to be LeBron and someone who flunked out the first year. Right? Kobe and Michael, Tiger, Serena. They took a day off. I mean, Tiger maybe. Who knows about him? But, uh, but the reality is, if we want to be experts, that's the type of work that needs to be done. That's the effort. That's the grind. And that's what it takes to be an innovative entrepreneur. And that's what it takes you to get ahead. Yeah, I think Kendall has a question also. Sure. Wonderful. So you want to see our prototypes and our crazy like half made creations kind of in all our videos and stuff? Uh, good if question. It applies. I, if it applies. Yeah, I absolutely. I think within the assessment, it does ask you to do some things. And if you can connect because. 
video is really meant for you to connect what you learn in the classroom, what you reflected on in the Project B journal, and what you reflected on in the creativity assessment. And that collectively and that it should be should some be sort of output some. with the video. So you can pull from everything. And if I haven't said so, absolutely. If you create things, show us. Don't tell us, show us. That's the best way. That's why we talked about the visualization. That's wonderful, absolutely. And if the students haven't figured out, when I say cite references, it's, I'm okay with you guys going for outside resources, but there's a reason why I've created the content because a lot of that is what you should, you're going to be tested on or you're supposed to be knowing. And everything on the internet is not true or relevant. So I would strongly encourage you to cite references that I use in the class. Because I noticed some students are citing things. Well, that's nice that you did outside reach, but I have no idea if you even read the content. And some of the things that you guys were citing on the outside, it's not even science based. It's not, it's just like opinion. And while there might be some truth or what resembles truth, I'm, it's better if we stick to uh, the content in the class. Of course, you can go above and beyond, but it's when you're connecting the citations from the content to what you're doing in, in the output is, is helps me understand that you're making these connections. Okay. Thank you. You know, you can watch a, a million TED Talks, but they could the most um, a monkey could be giving the TED talk. It doesn't mean it's true. Uh, but I've curated and spent a lot of time curating that. And a lot of that is based off of science, current understanding of creativity. I'm, I'm not presenting creativity as something hocus pocus. There are documented research, science, and knowledge around it. And TED talks aren't always like that. Or it's a case of one, and you know what happens if you try to generalize one thing. Who else? Uh, it's very hard for me to see the little hands raised like this. Uh, no more questions. All right. Uh, you guys getting into the rhythm? You guys like this Tuesday morning meeting? Cool. Oh, I like the thumbs up. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Wonderful. I got the wave there. Wonderful. Cool. Uh, guys, I'm proud of you. You can see the talent here. Let's bigger and better and big ourselves up personally and professionally. Of course, I'm here on this journey with you. Sienna is here. All of us are here. And if you need anything, reach out. It's better to work in advance because if you text me or email me the day of, I, I, I don't always have time to respond and I'm not sure why you're waiting the day of the turn and work. Okay, that's not being LeBron James or uh, Serena Williams. All right. That's being what we call a piker. The piker works and walks at the bell. Have you ever guys seen that that video uh, part with um, Boiler Room with Ben Affleck? Go check it out. Great, one of the best uh, two minute speeches Ben Ben Affleck gives it. Um, they call it a piker. Anyway, so guys, I'll see you next Tuesday. Of course, if you need anything, please feel free to reach out. But always enjoy spending the best place to be on a Tuesday morning. Now it's your time to find the second best place to be. So I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.